<clears throat> Second Chronicles chapter 10. The follow-up on this reading will be 1 Kings chapter 12, verses 1 to 15, which we've already studied. And Rehoboam, Solomon's dad, Rehoboam is Solomon's son, went to Shechem, for to Shechem where all Israel come to make him king. Now that's what happened to Solomon. But there's a problem. The temple's built now. It's not like there's no temple. The place where God says, I'll establish my name is there in Jerusalem. Why did he not go to the temple? Why did he not go up to the priest? Why did he not have his anointing there? Why did he still go to Shechem? Already shows us what kind of being he is. Should have been in Jerusalem. And it came to pass when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, this is, this is another man who fled in the time of uh, Solomon. We're going to read about the prophets going to come up to him. Solomon is, Solomon already sees that Jeroboam is going to divide the nation. So Solomon goes against Jeroboam. Jeroboam flees into Egypt. Again, this is 1 Kings 12, 1 through 15. So when Solomon dies, Jeroboam gets word and he comes back. God has something for Jeroboam. The son of Nebat who was in Egypt, whether he had fled from the presence of Solomon the king, heard it that Jeroboam returned out of Egypt. When he heard that Rehoboam, when he heard that Solomon's dead. Notice how they're still going to Egypt. God's told them over and over and over. Do not go back to Egypt. And they sent and called him. So Jeroboam and all Israel came and spake to Rehoboam, saying, Here's the complaint. Thy father made our yoke grievous. Now therefore ease thou somewhat the, grie the grievous servitude of thy father and his heavy yoke that he put upon us, and we will serve thee. Now we've come a long way from Queen of Sheba coming, how happy are your men? How great everything is going on. In between, between that and what we're reading in chapter 10, Solomon has married all these women, Solomon is building all these temples, he, he's serving all these gods, and he's, he's turned into a dip, uh, he's turned into a, a, a hard ruler. And he's plaguing the people with servitude, Build these things for me. Do this work for me. He's turned into a dictator. And as he turns his eyes off God and starts turning to gods and goddesses and whatever it be, he's losing that love, joy, and peace that comes with the Spirit. And not only is Solomon suffering, but all the people are suffering. And when you think, oh, when I dally in my sin, and my sin is not really making me happy, but I'm fooling the whole world and fooling my family around you. Everybody around you is not as happy as you are either. Sin affects everybody. Some is not happy because he's not serving God. And the whole nation knows he's not serving a God. And the attitude of not serving God and everything else, and his wife's giving him a hard time, and all these gods and God's plaguing his heart, God's chastising him. And it's coming off on the people. And they're not happy. That goes true with the church. When the pastor of the church loses the love of the Lord and starts going to other ways, well, then goes the love, the joy, the peace. And he said unto them, this would be Rehoboam, come again unto me after three days. And the people departed. Here's our cause, king. The king says, okay, give me three days and come back. And three days is an interesting thing that I'm starting to record it now to the Bible. And when I get done through the Bible, one of those things I wanted to study out, the Lord gives me time and willing for a study. And King Rehoboam took counsel with the old men that had stood before Solomon's father. That sounds great. People who worked with his father, people of age, now, Job tells not, not every aged man is wise, but it does work out. The, more, the older you live, the more you learn and the more mistakes you make by learning from the mistakes. While he yet lives, saying, what counsel give me to return answer to this people? Hey, guys, what? 
Jeroboam's come up and they, you know, they're they're crying, they're gravitating, they're, they're you know, they're giving, you know, complaining about how bad dad was. And they snake to him saying, Here's their counsel. If thou be kind to this people, which evidently Solomon was not, and please them, well, evidently Solomon wasn't. And speak good words unto him. Again, Solomon's probably not. Listen, these are the men that grew up with Solomon. These are the aged men with Solomon. There's, they saw how Solomon treated the people. And what they're doing is, I, I hate to say but reverse psychology. Everything that Solomon was, don't you be it. They will be thy servants forever. Now, he's not telling them to be a panty ways. He's not telling them to be weak, but, you know... Yeah, the people need a little help. The people need a little encouragement. That would be nice. And as we read on, we're going to see how brutal it did get under Solomon. But he, Rehoboam, forsook the counsel which the old men gave him, foolish, and took counsel with the young men that were brought up with him that stood before him, foolish earth. The wise men that grew with time that learned errors of their life and their mistakes. I forget you guys. The ones that are growing up are still making mistakes and have not learned very much by the mistakes and that won't listen to the elder people and their parents and their family. What do you guys think? You know? When dad tells you, well, I want to get a car, and he says, listen, don't get that sports car, the two-seater, if you want to get married, because you want to get married, that two-seater may have to turn into a seat with, with a back seat. You may have children. You know, dad learned. Sports car is not as, as practical as a regular car in your life. So he goes to the ones that are still learning and still making mistakes and are foolish. And they may have a diploma, but they don't have a diploma in life. Like the old man. And he said unto them, What advice give ye that we may, we may, us, return answer to this people, which has spoken to me, saying, He somewhat this yoke, somewhat the yoke that the, yeah, excuse me, ye somewhat the yoke that thy father did put upon us. Boy, he tells more to these young men than he did to the aged men. The young men that were brought up with him spake unto him, saying, Thus shalt thou answer the people that spake unto thee, saying, Thy father made our yoke heavy, but make thou it somewhat lighter for us. Okay, we want little, little easement here. We want a little easement. Thus shalt thou say unto him, my little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. Are you sitting down? Look at your lap. See your, see your thighs? You see how big your thighs are? That's the biggest muscle in your body. There's no muscle in your body bigger than your thighs, no matter what size you are. Now look at your pinky. See how small that pinky is? And if my father's tribulations and trials and problems were likened to a thigh, no. The troubles that my father has given is like the pinky. You see that? That's my father. You see, you see your thigh? That's going to be the problems I'm going to give you. That's not even 100%. That, that's got to be 1,000%. My father was a little pinky. Oh, boy, wait till you see what I'm going to be a thigh. Now, at the point that people thought, hey, Solomon's a thigh. No. He's just a pinky. I ain't done with you guys. That's cruel. That's just saying, my little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. It's not done. For whereas my father put a heavy yoke upon you, yeah, that's where oxen wear, now, it may not be a literal yoke, but, you know, Jesus take, said, take my yoke. My yoke is easy. My burden's light. 
And that's written to a bunch of people of Israel who the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes have put such a yoke on them. You know, you can't go so far. You got to wash your hands. You got to do this. You got to do that. You got to do this. You can't do this, but you got to do that. You can't do that, and you can do this. But and it's kept loading the people with all kinds of things. And Jesus said, "Your traditions are not of God." That's a religious yoke. Solomon that may not have a yoke like oxen on the people, and then again, he may. But the people are carrying such a burden to do what Solomon wants them to do. I will put more to your yoke. That's not good. My father chastised you with whips. You mean Solomon was beating them? What happens to that man that loved the God and Queen of Sheba? How happy your people are. A long way has come since sin. According to his own son, according to the documentation of the Holy Spirit, of the inspiration of the King James Bible, Solomon was whipping his people, and the building project is not the temple. It's not his house. It's all the temples and all the work that he's doing for the false gods. And look at the crazy man he's become. Look what sin and following other guys. You know what the most grumpiest person I ever met? And I don't know how many years I've been in, in the street ministry. My daughter was young, really young, when we started. I've dealt, even before my children, dealing with lost people, witnessing before I was married, when I, the years I've been married. You know the most grumpiest people you ever deal with is a Catholic. If words were swords or a flamethrower, I'd be struck and dead. I'd be burning on fire. They are the most angriest people ever to deal with. When you come across Jesus Christ and you're going to attack them, they're going to take you down and they're going to try to destroy you. Just by saying, we had one when we first started our ministry in, in uh, Port Orange here. We got our tables up, we got the books, we got the track. What gives you the right to be here? Hello, how are you guys doing? What gives you the right to be here? You know, you can even start off with that. Like, you guys don't have the right to be here. And religions will get you in that anger because there is no love of God in religion. I deal with Jehovah Witness, you know, that guy's forced us not to be here. No, I did not force you not to be here. I just gave you the scriptures and you got upset because I gave you scripture. Religion makes you angry. Religion makes you mad. Religion would say, oh, that, that family that we have that's supposed to be Christian, they don't want to have anything to do with it. No. We've got the God who loved us. We've got the God has shown us his love. And we've got the love of God. You're just angry. You're just mad. You're just following Satan, who's a murderer, who's a liar, who has no love, who has no mercy, has no grace. No wonder you're pussy footed face. No wonder you're angry. I'd be angry too serving that God of the devil. But I get the joy, joy, joy down deep in my heart. So I chastise you with whips. He's beating them. That's what you do with a whip. But I will chase you with scorpions. That's also a tribulation parachute. There's going to be horses going to have scorpion-like tails that they're going to sting you. And the torments of their sting will either be three or six months. And the Bible says they're going to wish they could die, but they won't be able to. And my understanding, I've never bit by a scorpion, never seen one, I don't believe, is they not only are they poisonous, but the sting that they give you is agonizing. What a ruler. Would you like to stay in this area? And yet a lot of people who do come to America are leaving countries that are rulers are just like this. They give no grace and no care for the people of its country. You gotta admit, some of these countries these people come from are tyrants. Solomon had one. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam on the third day as the king bade, saying, come again to me on the third day. So 
this is the talk of the young men. They, Jeroboam has not come back yet. Now he's come back. And the king answered them roughly. And the king Rehoboam forsook the counsel of the young, old men. So he's got an angry, mean, wicked voice. And said after said and answered them after the voice of young men saying, My father made your yoke heavy, yes, acknowledging it. He's acknowledging how his father was. But now they're thinking this is gonna be a good but. I will add there too. Now imagine the people right now when they hear that. They're coming to Rehoboam for ease. They're coming for Rehoboam for help. They're coming for peace. My father was bad. You think that was bad? You wait till I get a hold of you guys. Wow. That's not good. My father chasing you with whips? Now think about the people out there who've been whipped, who have got marks. I will chasten you with scorpions. I think that causes anger, hopelessness. So the king hearkened not unto the people. For the cause was of God, that the Lord might perform his word, which he spake by the hand of Ahijah, the Shilhite, to Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and that was... Oh, you. Second Chronicles ten fifteen. Eleven four. So the people hate what the king has said, and yet God was in it. We are. And have had in this nation many things that Christians who go to church have hate the government. And you're forgetting something. God may be in it. Oh, we don't like taxes, taxes. We want to get rid of taxes. We're going to have a tea party. Yet taxation in the Bible brought Joseph and Mary to where Jesus was going to be born. Luke chapter 2. If there was no worldwide or known world Roman government taxation in Luke chapter 2, Jesus would have defied the scriptures by being born in Nazareth. And the Bible said specifically to be born in Bethlehem. In order to get Joseph to bring his espoused wife who was pregnant for Jesus to be born in Bethlehem, in the city of David, Joseph had to be in Bethlehem. And the records would have to account the birth of Jesus by the Roman government that, hey, the Bible says he'd be born in Bethlehem. Oh, we don't believe it. Roman records recorded it by taxes. Somehow, and I don't know the story, but Joseph would step up with his wife who was pregnant. And they would say, name, Joseph. Name, Mary. Where are you from? We're from Nazareth. What family are you from? We're of David. Jesse, Boaz, Hobbit, you know. And then there'll be Jesus Christ was born of the family of the documentation of Joseph that he belongs in Bethlehem. He's of the seed of David. Roman government has recorded by the taxes of the family line of, of Jesus Christ found in Matthew 1. How's that? I bet you they all hated the taxes, but God used it. You don't like the president, you don't like the ruler that, that is in place when you you want to suck your thumb and wet your, your diapers. God put that man in office. And if Satan put that man in office, God allowed him to put him in office because God has something going on. No one knew, except for Jeroboam, and I don't know if he remembered, that what's going on right now, God had already sent the prophet to tell him. Gripe and complain all you want. God is behind the means. And it's not good. It's not happy news, is it? And yet, who's behind it? For this cause was of God. I'm going to make your life more miserable. I had him say that, God said. Pharaoh, I am not going to let your people go. God said, I had acted that. 
I want to make you people want to leave Egypt. I'm not going to want you to come ever back again. And when you do get out of here, I want to make sure you give me the honor and glory. Verse 16. And when all Israel saw that the king would not hearken unto them by God, the people returned, answered the king, saying, what portion have we have with David? The throne of David. That's what it is. They're going to usurp the authority of David's throne. Where Christ will sit. Listen, they're usurping the authority of Rehoboam. Do you know another king they usurped? Jesus Christ. They gave him a cross. What portion have we with David? We have none inheritance in the son of Jesse, Judah, the land. Every tribe's got their own possession in the land. Every man to your tents, O Israel. And now David, see to thy own house. Now here comes a split. David's going to break into Judah. There'll be three tribes, Judah, Benjamin, and Simeon. That will be Judah. The ten other tribes... They're going to go north. And from now on, when we read Israel, we're looking at north Israel, the ten tribes. They will not ever have one right king at all until uh, the Syrians come and take them captive. Syrians the same ones of Nineveh. Down south is called Judah. When we read about Judah, that's the ones down south. They will have good kings and they will have rotten kings. And the ones of Judah, the ones in the line of the Lord Jesus Christ of Judah. They will never get right again until Jesus comes. They have not gotten right yet. But as for the children of Israel that dwelt in the cities of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. That's Judah, south. Then King Rehoboam sent Hadoram that was over the tribute tax and the children of Israel stoned him with stones that he died that's a good way to treat the tax agent they stoned him but King Rehoboam made speed to get him to his chariot and fled to Jerusalem so he's going back into Judah he's left Israel north and he's going to where he's going to be and Israel rebelled against the house of David unto this day this is north and south the nation split, and this is 931 B.C. And at this split, because of Rehoboam, because of the hardship of, of Solomon, they have not gotten back together as one unity nation. And they won't be like that in the tribulation period. Because when the 144,000 are called, Ephraim and Dan are not of the 144,000. They're not listed. Joseph and Levi are mentioned. This nation is not going to get the back together as one complete nation again. See that throne of David? See that house of David? The Lord Jesus Christ will have to sit on that throne of David before the Israel become one again. Jesus Christ, their king, king of the Jews, the Roman Pilate said, he will unite them again under his kingdom, under his power, under his authority. In the millennium, will begin that nation to be unitized again. And in 931 BC, they split and they stay split. Uh, Half tribe Manasseh, Reuben, I forget the other tribe there, that are on the wrong side of the promised land. They go into captivity first. They did not go into the land that God told them to go in. They will go into captivity first. The next people that will go into captivity will be Israel, north. And then the final captivity in the land will be Judah. Judah will come back under Ezra and Nehemiah. Israel does not come back and have not been back until the Lord Jesus Christ comes. When you look at Ezra and Nehemiah, it's in Jerusalem. It's in Judah. It's not Israel North. 
and Jesus Christ will come from Israel north. Out of Nazareth, out of the Sea of Galilee, out of Zebulun, out of uh, uh, Nephtali. Those are nations in the north. And he comes down to Jerusalem. So we see a great event in Israel history here. They split. And they have not gotten unsplitted yet. 